let's simplify this trigonometric expression. So as we get going on this, I'm going to identify any identities that we utilize along the way. But I always try to get started and just rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine from the very beginning. So as you can see, we have a cosecant, we have a cotangent. We'd like to replace each one of those and rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine. So cosecant is equivalent to one over sine. You may be saying to yourself, that was squared. Well, this is cosecant quantity squared. So if you replace the cosecant with one over sine, it would be that quantity squared. And we're going to end up with one over sine squared of theta. Now, the identity we utilize there is referred to as the reciprocal identity. So you can refer back to these. I'm going to try to write down exactly which identity we utilize along the way as we need them. Next, we have cotangent squared. So coto cotangent can be replaced with cosine of theta over sine of theta. But in this case, because it was squared, each one of these is going to be squared. And again, that's referred to as the quotient identity or one of our quotient identities. So I'll go ahead and write quotient. That's where you're going to go from cotangent to cosine over sine. All right, further simplifying down here. Well, we have two separate fractions. This would be a little bit more simplified down if it was a single fraction. Well, good news for us, we already have a common denominator. So to combine two fractions together, you need a common denominator. Then you simply combine the numerators together over that common denominator. So one minus cosine squared over sine squared of thetas, of course. All right, from here, um, I noticed we have some squares going on, right? We have a cosine squared, one minus cosine squared. We have a sine squared. So it's probably a good idea to be thinking about the Pythagorean identity. All right, the Pythagorean identity usually goes as cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals one. So I'm gonna utilize it for the numerator. And I think we can replace one minus cosine squared if we just rearrange this and get the one and the cosine squared on the same side. So to do so, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract this cosine squared and move it to the right-hand side. So I can say that sine squared of theta is equivalent to one minus cosine squared of theta. And really just rearranging this, moving the cosine squared to the right-hand side. So that numerator based on the Pythagorean identity we can replace that numerator with sine squared of theta. And the denominator, again, is still sine squared of theta, bringing that along. So when we end up with sine squared of theta over sine squared of theta, same thing, numerator and denominator, that makes a one. And that's as simplified down as this one's gonna get. It's not gonna simplify further than one. So as you get going on these, I always suggest kind of keep track of which identities you utilize along the way, but rewrite everything in terms of sines and cosines. And then most of it's just algebra from there. You know, two separate fractions going to be more simplified if it's a single fraction. Whenever you have squares, be thinking Pythagorean identity to rearrange this and simplify down. Hopefully this makes sense as we walk through the steps on this one. Uh, keep practicing. It really does take a whole lot of practice to get comfortable with these. Um, but you'll get there.